What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this episode, we're going to be going over the PHP basic syntax. We're going to talk about how to create your first PHP file. We're going to talk about how to embed PHP within your various web documents. We're going to talk about the case sensitivity. We're going to talk about white space and things of that nature. The very basics before we move on to other topics. It's important to understand this part of it because you don't want to run into any issues when it comes to case sensitivity or a misunderstanding on how PHP syntax actually works. All right, so if you want to grab some code snippets, you can go to my website pixamweb.com go to the php tutorial section and any snippets that i share or create you can find here on the website you can copy it paste it to your clipboard and take it from there okay so what we're going to need to do now is first things first start up your web server i'm going to be using xamp for these tutorials but you could use any web server that you're familiar with so i'm going to start up my control panel for xamp and i'm going to click start right there now I'm going to go to my file explorer and remember your documents and your folders are going to have to be saved within your htdocs folder. So for me, I'm on Windows. This can be found in my local disk, XAMPP folder, htdocs. So here I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it PHP. Now what I want to do is we can just close the file explorer out and I'm going to go to my code editor. And for these tutorials, I'm going to be using VS Code. Okay, so I'm going to go to File, Open Folder, click on PHP. You see right here, again, I'm in my local disk, XAMPP HCDocs. I'm going to select this folder. And what I'll do is I'll first click on Create a New File, and I'm going to call it index.php. Now I'm going to go back to the browser, and I'm going to grab that code snippet from my website. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to copy the code snippet and then go back to my code editor and I'll just paste it right there. I'm going to make the editor a little bit bigger so that way it's easy to see. Okay, so now I'll save it. And what do we have here? First, we have our HTML document. This is signifying that it's going to be an HTML5 document. We have our HTML tag there. This is basic HTML. We have our body tag. We have our H1. Over here, we have our opening PHP tag, and then we're using a language construct. So echo is a language construct that allows us to pretty much print what we want to the screen, to the browser, to the command line. And I'm going to show you more about using PHP in the command line in an upcoming tutorial, but for now, we'll be using the web browser. All right, so we have echo, and then we have a string here. So you can tell it's a string, and that's another topic we're going to be covering in depth in another video. But we have a string here with the double quotation marks, finishing off with a semicolon. So this is a statement right here. We're making a statement. In PHP, you're going to learn about statements and expressions. So here we're going to say we want to print out to the screen, PHP powers almost 80% of the modern web. Then we have our closing PHP tag here. Then we have our closing body tag, closing HTML tag. So now let's go back to the browser. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification icon so whenever I create new videos, you'll be notified. So we're going to open up a new browser window. We're going to go to localhost PHP. So it's going to be localhost PHP. And as you see here, it printed out or echoed out PHP syntax example. That was from our H1 tag. And then we have PHP powers almost 80% of the modern web. If we inspect that in the developer tools, let's see what we get. We make this part bigger. We open it up here. We see we have the string there, but we don't have the PHP tags and we don't have the echo part. PHP is processed on the server and then it just generates the results you want to send to the browser. All right, let's go back to our editor. Another thing you're going to notice is that we titled this file index.php. So the way a web server works, whether it's Apache or Nginx or most web servers, index.html or index.htm or index.php is going to be considered the root document for that particular directory structure. So if you're in the root of your website, index.php would be considered the primary document. In the browser, we didn't have to put in localhost forward slash php forward slash index.php. We just needed to put localhost forward slash php. Or if you're on a Mac, it'll be localhost colon 8888 and then forward slash php. 
Now if we create another document, create a new file, I'm going to say about.php. Now we have another document here. I'm just going to grab this code here, paste it there. I'll change the H1 here to about. And now here we have an about.php file. We have to use the .php file extension because that's how the PHP parser and the web server will know that you have to process PHP. If you put PHP tags in a regular .html file, it's not going to work unless you change some settings in your web server, you know, to deal with the file extensions and things of that nature, which you really don't want to start doing because if you have to migrate your website, then those settings will also have to be migrated. So it's good to leave the default file extension conventions set on the web server. So with the PHP file, you need the .php extension. So now we have here, PHP is the programming language for the web. All right, so we saved it. Let's go back to the browser. So here you see we have localhost forward slash PHP forward slash. Now if you want to see that file, we put about.php and then we get the about PHP. PHP is the programming language for the web. And again, your PHP tags are not outputted. Now, what about case sensitivity? Let's go back to the code editor. I'm going to create a new file over here and just put test.php. Now, I'm not going to be putting in the HTML, like the doc type, the HTML tags, body tags. I'm just going to put straight PHP here. So in order to do that we're going to create this PHP file that's a standalone PHP file. So we'll open up with our PHP tags in that manner, go to a new line. And now what I want to do is talk about case sensitivity. So we already saw the echo command right there, right? I'm going to use single quotation marks this time. And I'm going to say, hello world. And I'm going to put in some BR tags here and then finish that off with a semicolon. So I'm putting the BR tag there so that way it'll break to a new line and we can see if there's any difference. So is echo case sensitive? Let's find out. So I'm going to make the next one fully caps lock or fully uppercase. I'll put in hello world again. Go to new line. Then I'll just do some craziness over here and say the same thing. Okay, so now I have three echo statements here. And then just for good measure, I'm going to copy this one right here. Now just make that double quotation marks. So now let's see if we get the same result. And then I'll come back and talk to you about single versus double quotation marks. Let's go back to the browser. This time, I'm going to go to test.php. And we see we have hello world printed out the same way. And you can see down here we have our BR tags. Okay, so that gave us the same result. So just a brief rundown. When it comes to the names of user-defined classes and functions, the built-in constructs and keywords like echo, while, and class, they're not case sensitive. So they're case insensitive. So that's why we got the same results. Now variables, which we're going to talk about more in an upcoming video, those are case sensitive. So if you have the same spelling for a variable name, but in different format, like lowercase name and then uppercase name and then a mixed case name, they're going to be considered different variables. So that's something to keep in mind. So case sensitivity in PHP is dependent on whether or not it's a user defined class or function or built in construct or keyword, or if it's a variable. Okay, let's go back to the editor. All right, so you saw here that I use single quotation marks and you saw here that I use double quotation marks. What's the difference? Well, basically single quotation marks is just going to process what's inside as a regular string. So just for an example, 
I'm going to create a variable here and this is going to be a very quick demonstration and I'll go deep into variables in an upcoming video, but I'm going to say name Joel. So now I'm going to say echo name and then I'll do the same again with double quotation marks. Matter of fact, let me get some BR tags here. Okay, already you see the code editor is showing this name variable here in a different color than this name variable here. You see that VS Code is putting the name variable on line 9 to be the same color as the string up here in these echo statements. So that's a clue right there. And that's why it's also good to use a good code editor that has syntax highlighting and gives you a lot of uh, useful features. Over here on line 10, you see that the name variable is white just as it is here on line 7. So that's a clue. Now let's go back to the browser and see what that actually does. Let's reload the page. So from the line 9 in the code editor, you see that it literally just printed out the dollar sign and name. And it did that as a string. But on line 10, it printed out the name, the value of the variable name, which is Joel. So that's one example of a difference between the double quotes and the single quotation marks. We're going to see a whole lot more in the upcoming video, especially when we're talking about dealing with the uh, command line and using some escape sequences, like using the new line character and other special characters. Okay, let's go back to our code editor. One thing you're going to notice here is that since this is a standalone PHP file, I didn't put in my closing PHP tag. We could have but it's actually best if a file is a standalone PHP file that you leave off the final closing PHP tags. And the reason why is because you don't want to have any HTTP headers outputted before files get processed. So in a standalone PHP file, you will leave off the closing PHP tags. Now, when it comes to statements within PHP, the semicolon is going to be vital. You're going to need to have semicolons in the correct places in order for your code to work. Failure to have a semicolon can lead to a syntax error. So if I take out this semicolon right here, you're already going to see in my code editor that it brings up an error. I'm going to save this. Let's go back to the browser and let's see what happens when we have that syntax error. I'm going to reload the browser. And now you see we have this information here, parse error, syntax error, unexpected. And then you have the variable name, T variable, expecting the semicolon or a comma. And it tells you the location. It's in the C drive, in the XAMPP folder, htdocs, PHP, test.php on line 7. Let's go back to the editor and check that out. Now, it said line 7, but it's normally going to be right before it. So it would be on line 5. So we corrected that saved it, error is gone. So you're going to have to make sure you put your semicolons in the correct places. And throughout these tutorials, you're going to see more and more what that actually means. When do you use a semicolon? When do you not use a semicolon? Things of that nature. Now, what about white space? Good question. PHP is a language that doesn't really care too much about white space, unlike other languages like Python, where white space is extremely important to the programming language. PHP allows you to handle your white space however you want. Now, this can be a plus or it could be a minus. It could be a pro or a con. The pro is you're not going to run into many issues if you format your code in a way that makes it kind of difficult to read. And that's where people feel that in some areas Python is better because of the fact that it forces you to have pretty much clean formatting of your code. But when you're coding, sometimes it's good just to be able to sit at the keyboard, type out your code, maybe develop your own style of formatting. And then, if anything, clean up your code later on. So that's where PHP gives you a little bit more liberty. So let me see how this works. We see we have on line 5 here. We have echo. We have the double quotation marks. Hello world. What if I put a new line there? Let me save this. Go back to the browser. Let's reload. And it gets outputted the same. But now in your developer tools, you'll see that on the back end, it comes out hello, new line, world. But here in the browser, it's still together. Let's go back to the editor. What if we put that on the new line and the semicolon on the new line? 
Let's save that. The hint is right now you can tell that we have no current problems, right? So you know it's not gonna really be an issue. Let's go back to the browser, reload. And again, the white space doesn't matter. Go back to the editor. Okay, so another example of white space. Let's say we're gonna create name to sign the value of Joel. But now let's say we're gonna put the name on the next line. What happens if we put the assignment operator on the next line as well, and then the closing semicolon on a new line? Let's save that. You see, we don't have any problems coming up in our editor. And let's echo out name two. Save that. Go back to the browser. Reload. And you see, it shows up just fine. Let's go back to the editor. So again, white space is not that important when it comes to PHP. And we're going to see more examples of this later on in the various tutorials that we'll have. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Just want to give you a basic overview of the language syntax, PHP syntax, how you would go about creating your PHP files, file naming conventions, case sensitivity, and white space. In upcoming videos, we'll go over more topics like data types. We'll be talking about functions, arrays, looping with for, while, and for each. We'll talk about conditional statements like if, else if, else, switch. We'll go into different operators within PHP and things of that nature. So just a recap, let's go back to the browser. Key things to remember, you need to use the .php file extension. You need to open up your PHP script with the opening PHP tag. Your code is gonna be nested inside your code block as we've seen. Semicolons are important to use after each statement. PHP has some case sensitivity, example is variables. And in most cases, you will need to close off your code block with a closing PHP tag, unless it's a standalone PHP file, which we saw with test.php. Now, when would you use a standalone PHP file? It could be for your functions file. It could be for various classes. And we'll get more into that when we cover those topics. But again, it's good to learn how the syntax of a coding language works before you move on to more advanced topics. Okay, so if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel to become part of our community. Hit the notification icon. If you have any comments, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding! Mm -hmm.